Can you describe what it was like waking up this morning and kind of realizing everything that happened and you guys are not NBA champs? It was a tough feeling. Um, it was a rough night kind of reliving one the game and, and how it all unfolded um, over and over and over and over again and thinking about things I could have done better personally. Um, it's kind of probably the theme of the summer when you think about basketball, but um, it's, it's a very tough feeling. And at the end of the day, we, we didn't accomplish our goal. We you know, had three cracks of getting one win and, and couldn't do it. So got to live with that all summer. And, and hopefully the, that this feeling that we have right now will make us better um, as we look to get back to the stage um, going forward. So that's basically it. You got to kind of appreciate what we accomplished this, this season because it was a special journey and a special ride. And, you know, a lot of good things did happen, but, you know, came up a little bit short. Did you get much sleep last night? Uh, a good amount. I kept waking up, though, and then it was a very surreal kind of just sitting in your bed, looking at the stand at the ceiling, thinking about uh, or realizing that we the season was over. So uh, tough. Huh? <clears throat> Pretty much the whole fourth quarter, um, and how it kind of just got away from from us. Um, I talked about yesterday. There were probably three or four possessions where. I personally settled um, looking for, you know, a big three when that's not what the possession called for. And obviously, we make or miss. Maybe we're having a different conversation. But um, when you when you don't execute like that, it haunts you. So it's a uh, it's a tough feeling. Step on that fast break play you made the pass to Iguodala. I'm wondering. At what point did you see LeBron in your in your peripheral vision, and then how did you see the rest of the play unfold from your perspective? I didn't see him until the end. Um, I was focused on trying to get the ball to Dre in the right time, <clears throat> and knew he's very crafty around the rim. LeBron made a great play on the ball uh, with the chase down block, and um, you know, he just made a great play. That's pretty much all you can say. Steph, the Warriors have eight free agents, four unrestricted, four restricted. What's your gut feeling? Are you guys going to have a similar look next year? I mean, I don't know. There's, uh, like you said, there's a lot of decisions that have to be made, and a lot of time to hopefully figure that out. Uh, we got a great roster right now that has obviously accomplished a lot, and. You know, I've, I've put ourselves in a pretty good position in the last two, two or three years. So, you know, hopefully the roster that's here next year is, is one that's capable of, of getting back to the stage and um, continue to, uh, to push this organization further. The other thing is you guys are extremely close. I've never seen a team with this type of chemistry. It would probably be very difficult for you to say goodbye or is that just part of the business yeah well, we obviously talk about it a lot we have definitely have something special with the character guys that we have on this team and and what we've all been through and and the brotherhood that we have um, you you want to protect that at all at all costs because of how special it is in this league and how quickly things can change uh, from year to year but you gotta have to just take it as it comes because you don't know what's gonna happen and where guys will end up being and, and what the look is gonna be. So, well, uh, as we always do every summer, you kind of uh, just kind of for us players, you kind of just wait and see. What's your message to the fans who took this wild ride with you um, and are disappointed as well today? It's not over. I mean, this is obviously not how we wanted the, the season to end this year, but. Um, we are very, very confident, optimistic, and uh, ex I guess w excited group knowing what we can accomplish going forward. So if you look at the history of the league, it would have been really nice to be in that group of teams and that have 
repeated and um, you know created you know that year to year special accomplishment. But it's only you know six. I think it was six teams that have done it. You know the teams that have fallen short find a way to um, to come back stronger and learn from the the, the experiences that we we went through. You know. Like like, like like games like last night and um, and continue to push the envelope. I feel very confident that we'll be back on the stage um, going forward and and have another crack at winning a championship. Steph, now that it's fair to say that as this playoff run longer, it started to feel even more like a, a burden not to fail as opposed to that joy that you guys experienced maybe early in the season. Not really. I mean, we we played up until game five. We played very, very free and um, and and obviously showed on the floor. Things were thrown at us um, in this series that uh, proved obviously tough to overcome. But I mean, when you have three cracks of winning one game and, and you don't get it done for whatever reason, you can kind of nitpick and say it was this, it was that, it was pressure, it was playing tight, it was whatever. It's it's it's, it's kind of hard to say because we were out there just, you know, I know for me I was out there playing, playing pretty confident, playing, you know, like like every minute mattered and we just didn't get it done. That's the way sports goes. So it's um, – it's it's obviously amazing to win, and you understand that's why you know you celebrate like you do because of how hard it is. And in defeat, you kind of have to uh, you know just take that pill and then move on. Now that it's over, can you can you talk about how limited you were with your knee after you came back? I realized during the games you couldn't say much about it, but were you at I, seventy? I will stay the same. I I was out on the floor and. Uh, Felt that I could do what I needed to do to to be effective in games. When it comes to how I was moving on the floor, I wasn't a hundred percent no, but um, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, coming back from a knee injury, uh, I was able to play and able to to uh, give it what I had, and um, it wasn't enough. Did you Dr. 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 last night kind of took the blame after after the game for? Missing game five, and um, was was there a lesson for him in this in this whole thing that was pretty tough to swallow? I think it's kind of unfair for him to say that. It's 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 on all of us, um, but I think as an as a competitor that he is, and you know, I'm I'm the same way. All I'm going to think about this summer is what I didn't do well enough to help us win. Um, I think that's a healthy kind of way to channel it, knowing that we're going to continue to get better um, as players and as teammates and as people going forward because of this experience. That's the best way to handle this kind of defeat. So um, it's unfair for that amount of pressure, no matter how what we say and, and how we compartmentalize it over the summer. There's a lot of things that didn't go our way um, and that we as a team didn't do collectively to get to get the job done. So. Whatever it is that's going to fuel each one of us to come back stronger next year, embrace it. Um, but it wasn't simply him not playing game five and all the drama of, of that suspension that caused us to lose. Um, you know, there are talented guys on the other team that played well. And, um, and you, can't, you can't discredit that either. Do you expect you this summer of rehab and rest? Strategy for the offseason, personally. Um, I I'll need to get some uh, some good rest and and recovery, obviously for all sorts of body parts, and trying to uh, get 100% healthy. Uh, I don't know how much time I'll take off, um, but once I get back on the floor, it's kind of you know business as usual of my preparation, uh, knowing what I do to get ready for training camp. So it, it's helpful knowing the situation last year of the time frame that we have playing into the finals and 
what the schedule is. Uh, with a quick turnaround, September will be here before you know it. So, uh, you know, I'll definitely be, hopefully take advantage of the time, uh, especially in the next two or three weeks to to get healthy first and then go from there. I just want to get back to the whole kid thing because I have kids and they come away from it and, and they don't really know how, they don't know what to say or feel. Some of them feel down, some of them feel angry. You know, it's just your team's not doing well or you spent all year with the team doing great. What do you say to kids in terms of the ups and downs about sports moving on? Um, well, as a dad, I just, my daughters are still young enough where they they know they're going to dad's game, but they don't know kind of the result. I think in the car yesterday, I had a moment. I told uh, Riley, you know, we didn't win. And she looked at me. She's like, I know. Um, it's okay. And I'm like, well, I used that moment to tell you. Yeah, I mean, uh, in sports, you, you win some, you lose some. But we had a, a, a great night as a family and everybody that came to the game with me. Um, when we went back to the house. We all... It wasn't as lively as a celebration kind of get together would have been, but it was still appreciative, a, a moment to appreciate all the good things that have happened uh, along the way on and off the court um, and keeping that perspective. Uh, this game means a lot to to us as players and to the fans and anybody who has the best interest in, in the game. Um, but at the end of the day, it's still life and you can still win at life knowing, knowing you know, we didn't get a championship this year. Um, and you got to keep that perspective to, to maintain uh, the integrity of what you do. So much of the discourse, much of the discourse around the nation, any... Steph, will be about how you didn't perform or what you didn't do in the finals. Uh, how, do you, how do you handle that considering uh, you are the MVP? I take it on the chin because I know I didn't play my best, and that's something that, you, that I'll have to deal with. I don't, that's my own expectation and my own kind of self-assessment. I don't need anybody else to tell me that. I don't need analysts all summer and breaking it down, why I didn't do this, why I didn't do that. My team didn't win. I didn't play my best. That's not going to be the end of the story. It's just kind of, you know, a down, down chapter in the book. So um, and having, having gone through early playoff exits, you understand that feeling which drove us to the championship last year. We didn't get it done this year, so it's what you know, what what do you take from from the from coming up short? And for me it's gonna be um, I think I won't watch the film of the game because it'll bring up too many bad memories, but understanding how I can control the game better and whether or not you know, I'll be in that position again, I know I'll be better. Um better equipped to handle it so that's kind of the the thing I hold on to